Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending tonight's board meeting. If you could all kindly stand for the wedding. Thank you, Mr. Tussey. So um, I know that everyone uh, received the letter that I sent out yesterday to all families in the district. So I just wanted to give an update uh, and share some thoughts on the matter. So, you know, I have to say that, you know, from day one of starting here as superintendent West Ice of last year, uh, school safety has been the number one priority that I have not only uh, you know talked about with our team, uh, but it's prior to my time arriving. It's what the team brought, uh, what this board of education has brought, and really an emphasis on school safety in this school district. Um, last year, just a few months into beginning in the district, there was a school shooting in Nashville, uh, and a number of parents came out to our board of education meeting, talking about uh, you know when is enough enough, and when. Uh, you know, we, have, we have to really talk about this issue. We have to confront this head on as a school district. And we were really tasked with taking a look at the possibility of bringing armed guards into our schools. And we looked at research, and we looked at data, and we looked at response times. And we made uh, an informed decision to bring armed guards into our school district to start this school year. Um, that was not a decision that we took very lightly at all. Um, we heard from a lot of different families, which began at a board meeting just like this, um, people sharing their thoughts and their concerns. And you know, we, we heard people, and we implemented that to start this school year. Uh, we also put a number of other different um, safety enhancements in place. You know, our district is, has, is certainly the safest district that I've worked in. Um, and I must say that you know, we have things like uh, full resistant glass, vestibules, we have a number of uh, you know, school safety members in each of our buildings, 90% being retired law enforcement. Uh, we are a safe school district. Uh, we brought in additional support at buildings like our high school. We have a dean of students, a teacher dean of students who we hired recently to start this year. And I highlight a couple of these things just uh, to kind of segue into uh, what took place yesterday at West Islip High School. So really, our worst fear um, of a student bringing a gun into our building took place yesterday at our high school. And what took place was the student came in, uh, showed the firearm to three other students in the building, and those three students immediately went to an adult in the building, our dean of students, Richard Lee, who's a teacher dean in our high school. He immediately went to our school safety team our, our lead guard, Tom Terry, our director of school safety, Sean McAlevey, who then said, okay, well, where is the student? Where did you see this? The library, they reported. They went right in to the library to take a look at what was going on. Um, you know, saw the student in the library, decided that they needed to act on it immediately, and they disarmed the student in the library right there. Um, the firearm was confiscated right away. Um, it was locked up in a secure location and the student was moved into the main office. Um, during that time, we had a hold in place. A lot of questions were taken about the difference between a hold in place and a lockdown. A lockdown is when you have someone, in, there's a threat in the building. For instance, there's someone in the hallway and there's danger and they're moving in the building. Um, we lock down immediately and we try to assess uh, the threat at that point and address it how we can. Uh, a hold in place, we use sometimes for Things like medical emergencies, you know, if a student's had a medical emergency, we need to put a hold in place so that the hallways are clear, we can <coughs> to go to an ambulance or things like that. Um, this hold in place was done at two points in time. One, to have the student move from the library to the main office, and another, once Suffolk County police had arrived and the student was arrested and transported out to the police cars. 
Um, I, I know that there um, are going to be people, and we welcome it, you know, to uh, hear thoughts about, you know, additional things that uh, we may uh, want to consider. We have debriefed as a team, we've debriefed as a crisis team, but really separate from all that, I want to stress that what we have put in place and the reactions and actions of people yesterday at the high school were perfectly executed. And I just want to give that really commend our school safety team, you know, who went in, who knew that there was a gun, who, who did not know if this, you know, at this point in time, whether this gun was loaded, whether this was going to be an incident where someone was going to have a gun pulled on them. And they acted because they truly care deeply about the students in this district, about the staff in this district, and about this community. And I just want to commend them uh, for their actions yesterday. So listen, I know when it comes to school boards, there, there's a lot of talk out there that we just listen and do nothing about it. But uh, in my four years on this board, I, I like to think that we've always put our best foot forward. We have listened and we have implemented. Six out of the seven of us, and probably not all of us, because Quinn is still just a young man, but we all have children in this school. And the truth of the matter is both of my high school age daughters were on the same bus as the student yesterday. So if you want to talk about things hitting home, it hits home. But the facts are, we as a district have created an environment where the kids knew what to do, and they felt safe enough to do it, and went to the staff who, as Dr. Romanelli said, handled it quickly, efficiently, and properly, and it truly ended in a best case scenario. I spoke to my kids yesterday, and it warmed my heart to hear both of them say that at no time did they ever feel unsafe. Now, I can't say that that's the case for all of your children, because I'm probably not so, but hearing that from my kids, who are nothing but always brutally honest to me, I know they were telling the truth. You know, I have concerns, and I think the concerns go deeper than just West High School. I know we're going to hear things coming up about metal detectors and wands and whatnot, but I don't know if that's the answer. And I think the truth of the matter is, you know, listening to News 12 yesterday, I heard one of our students talk about how, you know, the reporter asked, how do you feel about this? And his response was, eh, I'm desensitized to it. That's the problem. And that's not a West High School problem, that's an everywhere problem. I read on social media another mom who said that uh, it's sick and disgusting that the world that our kids are growing up in. And I'm, because of that, and I, and I agree, and I urge all the parents out there that we have to have open and honest conversations with our children. We have to look through their phones and their text messages. We have to go through their bedrooms. We have to go through their backpacks. And we have to know what's happening in their life. I know all of us can easily say, not my kid, but how do we know? unless we're looking. You know, growing up, my mother went through my belongings, and my response to her was, why? And she told me, because it's my job, and it's our job as parents, and we all need to do a better job. And I'm not saying to, that to all of you here. I know most of you here are, are probably pre preaching to the choir. And I thank you all for coming out here and showing your support and your concern. With that being said, I don't know if any of my other board members have anything that they would like to add. But I, I don't know if I said this already, but I, I want to thank the children who did step up yesterday and immediately. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Tussey, Dr. Romanelli, and specifically thanking those, those students and the security staff that really did their job. So when I came onto the board about six years ago, it was really the height of when the mass shootings were really affecting our children. Uh, we hired a security consultant group that came in. They had drones flying over. They, they reviewed all our all of our safety protocols, even our messaging, our how we contact to the community, so that everyone's informed. Because we want to be, as Dr. Roman Alley, and you've received many messages yesterday. We want to be transparent to what's going on to the degree we can, because it's your children in these buildings. And as uh, Mr. Tussey said, we all have children in the, in the buildings. My two were in the high school at that time, and they too did not panic. They felt that they were in a secure, safe place with an incident going on. And uh, that speaks volumes to what, we've, what, what has been created here. Um, part of that is a, a con concerted effort over the last six or seven years to make very large investments into the security protocols and the investments that we made. 
and I, I, I don't want to, you know, I want to cover a few of them because I don't want to get lost in some of the, you know, what, what goes on in the field. But as Dr. Roman Daniel said, we have been, security is our priority, safety and security, both physical safety and also well-being of our children, the mental well-being, which we heavily invested in. So just to cover a few of the things that we did, last year we did approve armed guards are in every building in our school. You know, that really came out as we saw a shift in what was going on in, in the world. You know, so they are there. That was instrumental uh, in this. We didn't have to, you know, our armed guards didn't have to, you know, get engaged with this, but they may have, and they went right in. And again, I would like to commend uh, Sean and Don for just what they did. They went in, you know, Sean also coaches my son's lacrosse team, and I saw him on the fields uh, you know, in Hot Hoppog after that, and he said, look, I'm not an educator. I'm gonna protect him. He goes, that, that student was not getting out of my sight. And he did so without thought, that's his job. And that's just commendable. What him and Don did that without thought, and that's, you know, that shows their police training and what the investment that we've made in the, in the community. Um, we did, we put security lobbies in all of the, of the buildings many years ago, the two, the two passes. Uh, we're putting a new one in the, uh, the district office actually this summer, so we'll continue to make investments. We've added more guards, more vehicles. We put air conditioning in, and you know, well, the interesting part, you know, that's just not for comfort. The air conditioning that, we, that the community voted on is, was a safety uh, uh, protocol. It allows us to keep all of the windows on the first floor shut. Two years ago, we had a student jump through the window and try to get into the building. So as Mr. Tussie said, we listen as a board and try to take in all the considerations and then go to outside consultants and experts to say, what do we have? You know, we work with Suffolk County. We did active shooter uh, training three years ago. Most of the board went through it. The, the, the entire high school for, for a full day had 250 officers from every different uh, um, divisions uh, on Long Island training just in case there was an active shooter. They got to know our New York State. To get the, we were the second school on Long Island to have that. We wanted that, Sean had to help us bring that in, and it was an eye opener to what goes on. But we are they are trained in our school to be able to do that. It's unfortunate, but they are. We have spent more dollars in the last three years uh, in security than we've spent in the past 20. So it's just our commitment to continue to do that. And it's not over, as I know uh, Deb Brown said at the meeting just before we came here, is we're always looking to, to, do, to do better, to do more than we can. The beauty of what happened yesterday, and if I can say beauty in that, is what we put in place for the last six years worked. A student, students, brave students, went to the dean that we had just hired last year. Went to the dean, went to security, security uh, disarmed the student, and the, uh, the police were called. That's a testament to pre-planning for what could have been a lot worse uh, day in the in, in West Islip. So commendable to everyone, from the students, the administrator, to the, to the security team. So just wanted to don't, not lose in terms of what we do. We are investing more next year in security. There's no budget cuts or anything like that in security. It is the top priority because the students, the teachers, the staff have to feel safe when they come to this building. And the testament, some of the testament was school went on as normal yesterday. You know, after this incident was taken care of, uh, um, students remained in the building, sports were played, and the, even at night, I came back and it was the jazz, uh, district jazz festival. That went on as well. Again, people felt safe for the protocols that we put in, but we're not, we, we never stop and we'll continue to do more. So just wanted to cover that. Again, as a, we all have children in the building, and as, as, a, as a father, um, I felt my children were safe yesterday in this building. And I, again, met, not, maybe not all of them felt that way, but I know my children did, and it's a testament to what, go, what goes on in the district. Appreciate it. I just want to also. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a, uh, just one last thing. We, the, Mr. Tussie and um, uh, Mr. Tussie can't mention a lot of things. Uh, one other thing too is that our our cameras, our security cameras, also hook up to Suffolk County Police, so they can see what's happening uh, in our schools. And most districts don't have that. And um, that's they mentioned a lot of things. And that's that's one other thing I just want to throw out there too. Yeah, when something like this, um, just to add a little bit, when something like this happens, you know, there's a lot um, in the days ahead and as we move forward as a school and as a district. Um, you know, this morning uh, we started the day at the high school. Uh, you know, Dr. Bridgman held 
assemblies for during first period for our 11th and 12th grade students. Uh, our 9th and 10th grade students came in during second period to talk about exactly what we're talking about right now and about what happened yesterday and what we can do moving forward. Um, we talked about all the different security protocols that we can tighten up within the building, um, whether that's ID badges or less students in the hallway or ways in which we have just a more efficient and orderly uh, building. And that really does take a team effort. You know, So we, we see um, it's, it's the teachers in the hallway reminding students to have an ID on. Um, it's making sure that students have a pass being in the right place, you know, and it's a constant, daily, consistent thing. And it's the students buying into that and families buying into that and encouraging people to, you know, do things like wear your ID or things like that when they come into the building. So uh, that'll be something that we're focusing on uh, in the weeks to come as well. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Romanelli. Uh, and there's one more thing I need to say now that I, I just lectured all the parents out there. I also want to take a minute to commend you guys for not panicking and flooding Lion's Path, trying to pick up your children, blocking way for security and police uh, presence, and making a potentially unsafe situation even unsafer. I know two years ago we had that situation, and God forbid we needed to get paramedics, police down Lion's Path, there was no way that was happening. So kudos to everybody for uh, staying calm in, in what was a very unsettling moment. And with that being said, we are going to move forward. We do have some uh, student recognitions to make tonight, which we are very excited about. Uh, first, I would like to call up the West Lysip Students with Heart presentation. Uh, their advisor, Mrs. Scudder, I believe is here. Yes, okay, and we have uh, the student reps, Madison, Kira, Lexington, and Abby. If you guys would like to come up to the podium, Actually, please. Uh, changing the okay. Are these students replacing other students? All right, so who's here? Make sure you say your name so we can acknowledge that, please. And welcome. We're so happy to have you here. It's nice to be here. Um, hi, my name is Corey Sanson. I'm one of the senior leaders of Heart Club. Um, our organization is a unique fun, uh, and fundamental uh, to the connection and relationships among our community. Heart is a place where you can relax and express yourself freely without any fear of judgment or discrimination. It's a place where people with different ethnicities, race, genders, sexual orientations, etc., can come together and create memories for years to come. Personally, Hart has made me a much more sociable and loving individual who has also, uh, and has also allowed me to make a long, uh, long term friendships. Um, the lobby is an important part of our community. It gives kids who feel like they have no voice or a chance to express themselves a um, just an ability to become part of the community. Um, we socialize, we have fun with painting, drawing, crafting different things that go along with important themes like Language Month and Pride Month, which is so very important to many kids in our schools. Hart um, would love to give a huge thanks to Dr. Bridgman for his support with allowing kids to decorate and create this fun, loving environment in the lobby, which is so important to the school itself. Um, this club has done so much good, not only in West Iceland, but people around the world. Peanut butter jelly gang, um, military care packs, food drives, and more are just a few things this club has done uh, to give back. And many are so thankful that we give our time and day to making things that sometimes make random people's day. Ms. Scudder has put her heart and soul into this club. Um, <laughs> She's put her heart and soul into this club and has made every effort to make everyone feel loved and included in this safe and loving atmosphere. With our heart, I would have never met my best friends and would have probably never been so comfortable in my sexuality and gender identity. Every part of heart is about giving to the community and without it, kids would miss out on key opportunities to socialize and develop relationships with others.
the whole entire group socially. I mean, not everybody wants to, want, some people go home, once they're home, they're home, and sometimes they don't want to go hang out with friends, they don't want to hang out with family, but HEART really allows everybody to come together and socialize and make friends and build relationships, which is very beneficial to everybody. And while doing that, we're also helping the community, we're helping everybody throughout the school, just spreading, spreading joy that we do the holidays and the Christmas tree and stuff. But not only that, um, sometimes I feel like when you do charity work, you don't always get to see like, the final result. You'll go, you'll donate clothes, but you never really see who's getting those clothes or what, how things go from there. But something that Miss Gutter always did a very good job of doing is always telling us about the final result. When we did the military packages, she'll always tell us about how the people, how like, the soldiers and everybody got them, how they loved them, and it was really nice to see everything come full circle. Um, and it's, Miss Scudder does a really great job, like Corey said, we really appreciate her. We have a great group of seniors this year who definitely help things along. But um, it's, some students look at clubs, like they just look good for college, but part is definitely more than that. Um, it's not only really benefiting ourselves, we're also benefiting the whole the entire community. And at times when we have difficult things throughout the district, it's really nice to have a group of people that is always there and a strong group to lean on. Thank you.
Paul County, Rocco Carpinello. Rocco has also uh, earned all state honors. For boys, varsity swimming and diving, Old County, William DeWitt. Marcos Procopio. Colin Stuber. And Brandon Felix. anybody down from the public who would like to uh, speak on behalf of an agenda item. Okay. Uh, we're going to move into personnel with Mr. Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. I'd like to request a uh, consent agenda this evening for items T1 through other, with the exception of TA1 and CL5. And I request a motion for a consent agenda with the, other, with the, with the exception of TA1 and CL5. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Excellent. Thank you for that. I want to just pull out. Uh, we have a couple of retirements this evening that I just wanted to announce one by one. So if I could have a motion for item TA1 for the retirement of Ms. Christine, Christine Stone, who was a teaching assistant with us for the last 23 years with our special education students. May I request a motion for Ms. Stone's retirement? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations, Ms. Stone. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Item CL5, I'd like to request a motion for the retirement of Ms. Pamela Riker, our senior office assistant from the high school. I request a motion, please. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much, Ms. Riker, for your 24 years of service to the West High School. School. Mayor, my office, I stand on the shoulders of my, uh, my assistants. I couldn't do it without them. So thank you, Ms. Riker. I'd like to request a motion for Ms. Jerry Santos Burrito, a library aide from Manitou. So I'll move. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And congratulations, Jerry, on your retirement after 24 years of service to Manitou. I'd like to request a motion for the retirement of Mr. Clive Scar, maintenance mechanic three, effective June 5th, 2024. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
And congratulations, Mr. Scar, on your retirement after 21 years of service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Cameron. Let's go into our curriculum update with Ms. Forrest. Thank you, Mr. Tussey. Good evening, everybody. Last week, students in grades three through five completed the New York State ELA test, and yesterday and today, our students in grades six through eight took the test. Our principals and directors reported that all went well, and students are um, looking forward to and scheduled to be taking the three through eight math test the first week of May. Bayview was transformed last week to Bayviewville for Park. The hallways of the building were decorated in themes of various Dr. Seuss books. Students are logging reading time each night, and overall minutes uh, for the readings will be tabulated at the conclusion of PARC on Friday. Grade three classroom teachers, reading teachers, and ENL teachers throughout the district took part today in day one of foundations training in preparation for the implementation of foundations into third grade in September. The program was overviewed and instructional materials and practices were introduced. A second day of training is scheduled for May. Dr. Romanelli, Mrs. Pilati, Mr. Cameron, and I were fortunate to be invited to Mrs. Pope's engineering technology class last week to watch students race their authentically designed wooden boats with 3D printed paddles. The races we saw were very close and all students did a great job creating their one-of-a-kind designs. The high school hosted a job fair on April 12th for approximately 31 local companies and agencies. They showcased a variety of job opportunities for graduating seniors. Examples of those that participated are CPI Aero Structures, the West Side Fire Department, various law offices, the Suffolk County Department of Civil Service, Our Lady of Consolation, Nursing and Rehabilitation, data software companies and Uncle Giuseppe's to name just a few. It should be noted that many of the representatives from the companies and agencies wore West Side of alumni. So it was really great to see. I know I was talking to one um, young lady there. She is an architect in Bayshore and was representing her company. So that was really exciting to see. Thank you to Mr. Valmuth, the transition coordinator at the high school and the companies and agencies that took part in providing this awareness opportunity for our students. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. All right, thank you, Ms. Morrison. Uh, I'm just going to call for a two to three minute uh, break. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back together in uh, just a couple of minutes. Thank you.
right, thank you everybody for your patience and understanding of that. All right, so at this point we're going to move into our uh, report on board committees and I would like to turn it over for the Building and Grounds Committee with Mr. McCann. Thank you, Mr. Tennessee. Uh, Building and Grounds Committee met on um, March 26, 6.30 p.m. at the uh, Beach Street uh, Middle School Library. All uh, board members were in attendance as well as the administrators, Dr. Romanelli, James Cameron, Elisa Pauly, Don Morrison, and James Bossy. Uh, a few of the updates there, general, um, general uh, uh, buildings and grounds uh, items that are out. Uh, just so everyone's aware that we do rent the auditoriums out from time to time. So if you see outside like, agencies in the auditoriums, we, uh, we, that is a source of revenue for us. I know there's, there's many times where outside dance companies come in and provide great shows for their, for their uh, participants. So that is something that goes on in the high school. We just want to be clear for that. Uh, we do have community gym usage that is available um, for, for off hours uh, for, um, for, for all. Uh, the Paul J. Balloon parking lot expansion that we did last year, we've added lights to that. Uh, if anyone's been down there in the evening time, especially on sporting events, so those pole lights are going to be working. So thanks to James Boston and the security team really for doing that. Update on Masera. Masera is still on target to open uh, their BOCI school in September. So you're going to see a lot more activity if you haven't seen it already. Uh, they're putting a roof on, they're putting fencing, they're talking about a parking lot extension. So they are want, want to be in there fully operational by September and they are on target to do that. So great addition. Again, with that we'll still have all use of the fields for our sports teams um, and we um, really hope is funding the entire um, renovation project for us. Um, in addition to, um, we talked about a little bit about security, we are putting a new security lobby in at the district office, which is connected here to Beach Street. It's the last um, a lobby that we need to put in. So that construction is actually approved by a, a grant from Smart Schools. It's about $1.4 million grant to do that. And that was finally approved and should start this summer. Um, so we anticipate summer fall construction. So that completes the, all of the lobbies that are in the district for security. So um, we continue to work on buildings and grounds. Uh, just a, a, a shout out to that team. Uh, spring sports are full in motion. You see the fields being used continuously. So the building and grounds group does a great job getting the fields ready and watching those sports out there is really a joy. A joy. Um, buildings and Grounds uh, uh, meets next month and appreciate uh, the time. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. McCann. Let's move into health and wellness with Mrs. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Tessie. The Health and Wellness Alliance uh, met on Tuesday, April 9th at the Paul J. Blue Cafeteria. Members present were Tim Horan, Rhonda Pratt, Deborah Brown, Lindsay Hamchuk, Melissa Haggerty, Mark Soto, Kirsten Girardi, Ariana Stubman, Noreen Pampner, Christina Alfonte, Jeanette Hoffman, and Nicole Wittenberg. We went over the financial report. Uh, we also spoke about the newsletter that went out, newsletter that went out to the uh, district, and the health and wellness sponsorships. Uh, senior, excuse me, the health and wellness senior scholarships. There'll be two of them for $500. Applications are being submitted, and they'll be awarded on Monday, June 3rd, at the high school uh, scholarship night. Now the fifth and sixth grade volleyball tournaments were a really good success. Over 160 students participated and over 20 student volunteers. Uh, the community event that we um, are gonna hold in November is the Glow Run on uh, November 6th. It's a Wednesday evening. That's, we're gonna have DJ, Vendor Village, photos, glow sticks. Um, it's gonna be on the West Isaac High School property and will follow the same course as the Color Run. Uh, sponsorships for the event will be available for $75, and the rain date for this will be Thursday, November 7th. The next meeting is Tuesday, May 7th at uh, 9.30 a.m. in the cafeteria at Paul J. Blue. Thank you, Mrs. Kelly. Let's go uh, move into Education Committee with Mr. Antonello. Okay, thanks, Mr. Tussie. The Education Committee met on Thursday, April 11th at Beach Street uh, Library. All board members, with the exception of Mr. Tussie, were in attendance. All administrators were also in attendance. Uh, first topic of discussion was the uh, that the Regents Review classes have begun. It's, it's that time of year. The uh, second was a, uh, an update on the Equity Committee. Uh, Ms. Morrison gave us the update. Uh, there was a review of student data from the last meeting. Uh, lots of things were discussed, bullying, inclusiv inclusivity, uh, things like that. Uh, free lunch, also. Uh, the, uh, the takeaways are that the, uh, the kids are overall uh, pretty happy and comfortable, but uh, there were some uh, up to 25% not completely comfortable and would like to see some improvements too. 
Uh, the biggest issue, uh, as always, is bullying uh, and uh, how, to, how to combat that. So these things will be uh, discussed in um, other committee meetings going forward. Uh, the uh, New York State ELA test uh, was mentioned by Mrs. Morrison. That took place this week. It's all on computer now. Uh, there's been a reduction in refusals compared to previous years. The uh, fourth item was a uh, discussion of the ASL program and the discussion of restructuring the program, uh, phasing out of the middle school fully and placing it into the high school uh, as an elective. Uh, it's currently uh, in show to the ASL in seventh grade. It's going to be shifted up to the high school. Uh, the instruction will also allow for, uh, for college credit for uh, ASL and also um, uh, for a seal of biliteracy and the possibility of taking two languages now, um, including ASL. And the meeting ended at 7.30. Thank you, Mr. Antonella. We have the Finance Committee with Ms. Marks. Good evening. Always get an interesting Finance Committee report, everyone's favorite. Uh, the Finance Committee met on April 11th. Committee members present were myself, Grace Kelly, and Pete Pan. Board members in attendance were Mr. Antonello, Mr. Bedell, and Ms. Brown. Administrators present, Dr. Romanelli, Elisa Pilati, Don Morrison, and James Cameron. The following were presented and accepted by the committee. The Treasurer's Report for School District Funds for February and Extracurricular for February, Payroll Summary, and financial statements for February, internal claims audit report for March, system manager audit trail for March, payroll certifications for March 22nd and April 5th, and a review of warrants. And the following items were, are going to be up for approval this evening. Uh, budget transfers, approval of a donation from Jovia Federal Credit Union for $500 towards supplies for the makerspace and approval of two items for surplus and three contracts that Mrs. Pilati will detail, so I will save you for hearing that twice. And the meeting is adjourned at 7.35 p.m. Thank you. Like a seasoned veteran. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, policy committee with Mr. Cameron. I thought policy committee was the reason <laughs> uh, As everybody knows, it's been uh, following along. Our policy committee is working with a complete overhaul and update of our entire policy manual, working with the New York State School Boards Association, our Board of Education trustees here, as well as the offices of Bowles and Vigliata. And thank you, Michaela, who is helping me out with a lot of those things. Um, this past Thursday evening, we finished up our review of the Series 2000s, which is about school board governance and operations. We also started our review um, of the Series 1000s, which is the community relations. In addition, we had our first draft of a cell phone policy that came out of a cell phone policy committee that we have here, a cell phone committee here in district, where we're essentially developing a electronic use cell phone policy for our students, and it'll be across three levels. Uh, there'll be an elementary, uh, a middle school, and as well as a high school um, policy that will govern student usage and will go in effect and before the first day of school next year. A draft of that policy will be online at the end of this week, and um, we're excited that we are currently through our first three sections of our new policy manual, and we'll continue our work at our June 4th, 2024 meeting, and we'll be going live with our new version of our policy manual in from zeros to 3,000s by July 1st, 2024, and the overhaul of the remaining sections will continue through the 2024 and 2025 school year. All right, thank you, Mr. Cameron. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cameron. One thing on that, um, there is, you know, uh, Mr. Cameron mentioned the cell phone policy, so uh, there's committees met, and we've, uh, there's a comprehensive cell phone policy that will be in effect for next year. You know, we, we took a look at cell phone usage in the classrooms, you know, in the hallways, in the, in the uh, cafeterias, we want to try to maximize the learning capacity of the students so they're not distracting class. So the comprehensive policy was put out. We're going to have educational nights for the parents. We're going to put it on <coughs> Parent Square. So you'll be educated as to what that is and how it will be in effect. But uh, as a board of education and with the administration, I really think it will have a positive effect on the students. All right, thank you guys. Let's move into special education with Mrs. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Tusty. Good evening, everyone. The Special Education Committee met at 9 a.m. on April 16, 2024 at District Office. The administrators present were Dr. Romanelli, Dawn Morrison, Jean Dowling, Gail Dougherty, 
Lindsay Ednick, board members in attendance were myself and Christina Marks. The committee discussed IEPs from CSC and CPSC recommendations from the respective committees. Those recommendations will be approved this evening. Annual reviews are currently in full swing. We have 87 CPSC kids transitioning to kindergarten next year. Our United Basketball team played their first game yesterday. They will play tomorrow at 4 p.m. at the high school against Lindenhurst. So if you can come, drop on in. We were joined um, by SEPTA President Melissa Swales during the non-confidential portion of our meeting. The annual SEPTA Moonlight Bowl was a successful event. There were 120 bowlers, 80 baskets donated. The event raised around $5,200. Thank you to all the parents, teachers, admin, staff, and the SEPTA board. The event was a lot of fun and a huge success. At the March SEPTA meeting, there was an ama amazing guest speaker named Laura Hollins, who was a sexuality educator. She presented on how to talk to your kids about sexuality and puberty, as well as intellectual and developmental disabilities. It was a well-received and informative presentation. We discussed ways in which we may be able to incorporate a presentation from Mrs. Holland, perhaps as a professional development in the future. We discussed incorporating a SEPTA board member into the next CPSC to CSC parent education session. The district had awareness and acceptance days for Down syndrome and autism in the months of March and April. Beach Street Middle School hosted a hosted and developed a super fun sports night as an inclusive event for our students with disabilities and their typical peers. On March 21st, students and staff celebrated Down Syndrome Awareness Day by wearing crazy socks, which symbolize chromosomes as blue, at blue, sorry. On Tuesday, April 2nd, students and staff at Paul J. Blue wore blue to recognize and celebrate students with autism. Classes at Baloo partnered with their buddy class and made a craft to recognize Disability Awareness Month and promote inclusivity. Students colored a butterfly, which signifies change and represents the diversity of individuals on the autism spectrum. Teachers have a book list covering a number of disabilities to read to their classes. Baloo also did a mile for smile walk, which is a day where students <coughs> and staff wear blue and walk around the high school track. Other buildings in the district recognize autism acceptance by wearing blue and reading books such as I'm Special, I Am Me by Ann Meek and Sarah Massini. The high school has posters throughout the school which highlight that diversity is our strength. For World Autism Awareness Month, Manitoc decorated their cafeteria with blue lights and is hosting the author Bill Shea on April 30th to read and speak to the students. His book is called A Grandpa Joe Day Book. <laughs> and Very nice. And he's a Blue. Um, Very nice. Even better. Got to help our own, you know. Um, keep it in the fans. The meeting adjourned approximately 9:45 a.m. The next special education meeting is May 8th. The next SEPTA meeting is tentatively, tentatively scheduled for thir the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. And that is all. Thank you, Mr. Tuffy. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Finally, let's move into our safety committee with Mr. Fidel. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, safety committee met this morning at 8.30 a.m. in the uh, Paul J. Blue uh, cafeteria. A few things are on the agenda, uh, technology updates. We have uh, finally got our ID card printers in, but uh, we're still having trouble uh, getting in contact with people have to set it up, so we still push into that. We uh, talked over uh, door alarms, especially at the uh, elementary school level, and we're uh, looking into ways to uh, install some alarms for the doors to uh, indicate when people go in and out. Uh, we talked about um, MFA uh, for staff login and how that's going to be implemented in the uh, upcoming months. And then we also talked about uh, the IP cards and how uh, there's, a, there's a problem definitely in the uh, middle schools, but maybe also in the high school, of uh, when people lose, uh, students lose their uh, cards, what the uh, proper procedure will be to uh, have a, uh, maybe a loaner card or uh, change the system a little bit with that. We also talked about, um, in buildings and grounds, we talked about the uh, Paul J. Blue, we installed those uh, light poles, like Mr. McCann said, to uh, help with some, some brightness over there. And then we were also talking about the, uh, in the back of 
the high school where the bridge comes across, we were talking about possibly putting in some sort of speed bump or a crosswalk or something to uh, allow for easier uh, pedestrian walking from the bridge to the back of the building. Um, in safety and security, we talked about uh, how it's springtime, and uh, even though we have the air conditioning in, a lot of times teachers like to open their windows and uh, uh, allow for fresh air to come in. We're talking about how we can try to uh, keep teachers aware that when they leave the, the room, that they have to close the windows and keep the windows monitored so that way we can uh, keep problems out. And then we also talked about the uh, incident at the high school yesterday. Uh, I think we covered that in pretty, pretty detail, but I'm sure that we'll talk about it later. And, uh, that's it for the uh, safety Thank you, uh, Mr. Patel. Let's move into business items with Ms. Block. Thank you, Mr. Tuffy. May I have a motion for the approval of budget transfers 4362 through 4376 in the general fund and 4365 and 4375 in the capital fund? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of surplus items listed on the agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the contracts as listed on the agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the donation from Jovia Financial Credit Union in the amount of $500 for West Texas High School Labor Space? So moved. Second. Discussion? I just want to uh, say thank you for the donation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the increase to the budget for 23 24 school year in relation to the $500 donation? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Spotty. We have a motion, please, of approval of the date for the reorganization meeting uh, to be July 9th, 2024, at 7 30 p.m. at the Beach Street Middle School. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, this is not a motion of approval yet. We'll look to do that next meeting, but uh, I just want to ask if there's any questions about the notice dates for the regular meeting and planning sessions. Nope. Okay, that's good. You may, Dr. Romano. Um, I know that there was a discussion about one of our upcoming board meetings in May. Uh, so we have our budget vote on May 21st. We have a meeting scheduled for May 22nd. Uh, typically, the board meeting will coincide with the night of the budget vote. Uh, so if the board is comfortable with having the board meeting on the same night as the vote, uh, we'd like to consider uh, shifting that to that night. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Okay, so public we'll get that put out there. Okay, great. Thank you. Bet. All right, please. Uh, can I have a motion of approval for the re resolution regarding the East and Suffolk Post's 2024-25 administrative budget and trustee election? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Can I have a motion of approval, please, regarding the adoption of the 2024-25 school but uh, district budget of $138 $761,990 and the 2024-2025 property tax report card. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah, just one point on that. So um, tonight is the approval of the 2024-25 budget. We are still, I think, believe we're working through some final numbers on this, but we believe that the estimates that we have put forth will stand forward. Um, is that correct, Ms. Bono? Yes, that's correct. Okay. As, a, as you all know, the state is still releasing uh, the, uh, the uh, aid dollars, so we're still finalizing that, but I think we, we baked everything into the budget to uh, account for that. So we're approving that tonight with, uh, with those numbers. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I have a motion of approval, please, for personnel for May 21st, 2024 school budget vote and election. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion of approval regarding the Smart Web Incorporated Consultant Service contracts uh, for July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion of approval of the Winkler Real Estate Professional Service Agreement Amendment Number 1, which is an extension of term to March 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion of approval of these MLB solutions, um, 36 months of subscription in the amount of $2,496. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Right, this next <coughs> you a roll call, so we will say yay or nay one at a time, and we'll start from uh, Mr. Goodell. I need a motion of approval, please, regarding score resolution grant funding. Uh, Esser 2, Gear 2, Krissa, Arpa, and Esser. Yes. Mr. Vidal? Ms. Marpa? Yes. 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 And yay for myself. Finally, a motion of approval, please, regarding the Board of Education, which approves the recommendations of the Special Education Committee of Students listed in the district's backup and authorizes the district to arrange for appropriate services. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Dr. Romanelli. Thank you, Mr. Tussie. Let's keep the uh, report quick this evening. I know we gave a big update uh, earlier uh, in the meeting. So I just wanted to um, comment on two things I was able to visit uh, Mr. Murphy's Vietnam class. They have a yearly ceremony at the Vietnam Memorial at Westside Sub High School. If you haven't seen the memorial, um, you can see it on the left side after coming in Lion's Path and, and making the turn. Uh, there are eight names on that memorial of uh, members of the Westside Sub community that served in the Vietnam War um, and gave their lives. And we also I learned at the ceremony about uh, Long Islander named Garfield Langmore, who uh, received the Medal of Honor actually uh, for his actions during the Vietnam War, which was uh, great to learn about, and I've been uh, reading a bunch about him since uh, that visit there. So a big thank you to uh, Mr. Murphy and just keeping uh, that class alive. It's one of the only uh, Vietnam classes on Long Island, and our students really do get a lot out of that from learning about it. Um, and then just the second and final piece, uh, I was able to visit Ms. Kristen Tello's class uh, this week. Uh, actually last week at um, West Tyson High School. Uh, and we're talking a lot about branding with your students. Uh, we've all kind of visited there and talked about you know, developing the future of West Tyson with logos and branding on our website and things like that. And the students have come up with some amazing designs. Um, I also ran into one student, Kaylee, in there, who um, she was, Ms. Kristen Till was really eager to show us kind of something that she had created. One of the um, Macs in the Mac Lab uh, the screen itself had a kind of a sharp corner on it, just from a lot of like wear and tear, and all the other uh, monitors were developing that as well. So she actually um, said, oh, you know what, I think I can create something like this. She's one of our robotic students, she's also in a CAD class. So she, you know, created in uh, Fusion 360, which is 3D modeling software, kind of this corner piece for the monitor. Uh, first uh, used the PLA filament, which she determined was a little bit too hard, was still causing uh, scratches on different things. So then she used the uh, TPU filament, which is more flexible, and kind of demonstrated that for me. And uh, after the third iteration, because that one was about a, a, a foul office, how she described it, um, she had the perfect piece uh, for the uh, Mac display monitor, and kind of they're, they're being now created for every uh, monitor in the room there if needed. So just thought that was a really kind of ingenious uh, sort of thing. This is a student who, you know, is in our uh, takes our CAD classes, takes our, our STEM classes, and is in our, on our robotics team, and uh, is using those skills to kind of address real life problems. And uh, that's everything we kind of talked about with our profile graduate and really being able to apply our work. So we were just really proud of her when visiting and seeing that, uh, that ingenuity there. So thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, uh, thank you, Dr. Romanelli. Uh, I do have a few people that would like to speak, so uh, I'm going to invite down Mr. Jason Cohen. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Romanelli, Mr. Tussie, and Mr. McCann for everything you shared earlier, and thank the board and district office for your efforts and everything you do for school safety and security. Um, in reality, this is a school, not a prison, um, and I'm not insinuating that we shouldn't be security conscious. Um, but right now, you could walk into the high school after hours, sports, athletics, events going on, um, and there's really nothing that could stop somebody with ill intentions of placing weapons in any place. Um, I think my concern would be, you know, we could talk about metal detectors and 
you know, putting all these things in place. And unless we have one entrance in and out with people staffing that 20, you know, any moment the building's open, nothing's really gonna work. Uh, it's a high school. Kids pop doors open for people all the time. Um, I have a freshman there. And, uh, my concern is I think really once we know that there is a threat in the building, security responded, armed security, that was wonderful. Um, how do we know that individual isn't acting in concert with somebody else? Um, I truly believe that building should have put them, been put in lockdown yesterday. And I think that is of the biggest concern to me um, in the height of all these school incidents that we have. Um, there are so many different ways around it. And I think the practices we put into place are going to be the most beneficial in the unfortunate event that there is an active shooter in the building. And uh, I think I'd like the district to really look at that and reconsider the practices and make sure our staff is ready for that and ready to act and put the building in lockdown. It's the worst thing that happened. Kids sit in the classroom for a little while until Suffolk PD, SWAT, K9, whoever it is has to come in and make sure the kids are safe. Being open after hours is, has been uh, a discussion that is ongoing and uh, it's not something that is falling on, on deaf ears. I don't know if you want to respond to uh, anything. I would just say that that's um, a concern. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. You know, that's a concern that we uh, have been raised to us from some staff members, some students asked at the assembly this morning, uh, and we're hearing from you know, different community members as well. So it's something that we certainly uh, discussed at our safety, district safety committee meeting this morning. And um, you know, we're absolutely uh, having those discussions about you know, when it's gonna be open place, when it's a lockdown and things like that. So certainly something that, that we're speaking about. We appreciate your, your input. Yeah, thank you. Uh, our next speaker will be uh, Diane Seppi, if I pronounced that correctly. First, I want to um, share my gratitude to everybody that was involved in yesterday's incident that allowed it to not have to escalate into anything bigger than it was. So the security guards, I'm so grateful for. We ran towards danger where a lot of people don't, so that doesn't go unnoticed. And for the students, I only hope that my kids would be as brave as they were to be able to go and tell someone as fast as they could. Um, with that said, I just have a couple of questions too. Um, you know, Mr. McCann, you said, uh, you said something before, I don't know your exact words, but you were talking about the armed guards um, and how they didn't have to be uh, activated or something like that. Something along the lines of like they were, they, I can't remember, so I just want to get some clarity because there's a lot of rumors going around. Um, were any armed guards there when it occurred in the library. So yes, yeah, so we have um, at least one armed guard at all of our buildings at all times. Um, and we did have armed guards available without giving you know any more information and on scene uh, at to address the incident. And the reason why we're going to not be so specific is because we just want to conceal the identity of who our armed guards are because it's not anything we want to be made public. I understand. And I know there's something that you can't answer for your safety purposes. Um, also, and you might not be able to answer this question either, um, but at one given time at the high school, are, how many armed guards are there? So I would just say, uh, I'm just going to reiterate, not trying to be difficult, but uh, just to reiterate kind of what we said before, we have at least one armed guard at all of our buildings at all times, and some uh, buildings we have more than that. So I would say if our larger buildings in the district, we may have more than one um, at a time. We also do have um, backup as well. So if someone is not in for that day, we have someone that would take their spot um, that's already been approved uh, as an armed guard. Uh, so we are never uh, without an armed guard in each of our buildings, and we, we may have 
can have more at our, our larger buildings as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we do have Ms. Kelly Rathalia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So are you, um, you're, I know you're referring to the um, elopement issue that we yes. had at Oakland. Yes. Um, so we did have a situation where we had um, two students leave the school building uh, at Oakland. So we've actually looked into that. Um, we've had a bunch of debriefs there as well on that. And we've talked about, you know, we've already been looking at getting quotes and things like that for, uh, there, that's all in motion about potentially alarming some doors that we have. Um, so we do think that that's not an overreaction. You know, we our uh, school safety team was present. You know, patrolling the hallway. Um, you know, and we have. Uh, I would say that to give some specifics about the incident, uh, when the students did leave the building, uh, they were spotted. Uh, we were able to. We also, you know, we have. We didn't mention this tonight, but we have two. Uh, security booths, camera rooms in our district, you know, one in the north and one in the south, that are able to have views of every building and everything that's going on. So the second we have something like this that's reported that we saw um, two students exiting the building at Oakland at this exit, we, around 1025 in the morning, right, we can uh, radio into the camera room, we can get video and still picture of the students and what they're wearing, you know, what the, where they exited, what time they exited. Um, and then what we do is we make a report to the police immediately. You know, we do also, um, I know staff, you know, this is not necessarily part of our protocol, but are um, eager to make sure that we can locate the students and we'll go out and, and, and look on their own as well. Uh, but we're able to provide that information then to the South County Police Department, who will then um, <coughs> contact the families, we talk about what's going on, um, and we kind of work with them to locate the students. So the students were located, um, and it was something that uh, we worked on with the families and at the building to kind of look at our different protocols there. Um, so I think that it's a tricky one to call well, on specifics just to not get into the privacy of the- It detail now, back yeah. for us, <coughs> and maybe some attempts to meet you. The feeling was that it was being swept under the carpet. Well, my heart of hearts, I know that's not true. Desperate attempts to get information just fell apart. Um, so it's helpful to know that I don't like the word potential alarming the doors. I would love to hear, and I think the community would like to hear that they will be, not just in Oakland, but the other schools as well, because this, this is advanced for an elementary school, this yeah. type of situation. I, I think it would be inappropriate to say that yes, we're going to do it. It, it is definitely something that we want to accomplish, and I'm confident that it probably will, will happen. But of course, we have to do it. I understand. I understand. I just feel like our community, it just like we it's, have responded. It's been a lot with, the last few months. We have responded with this situation could have been worse a little too much in a short amount of time, so it's just a little bit scary. Yeah. No, um, we, we certainly. Um, Agree with your thoughts there, and it's something that we're. Looking my thought was, I'm so happy those students were found safe, but somebody could have been let in. And I would just That's add that you know I know that um, Mrs. Harvey is someone who's very responsive, you know, and like we we do welcome one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with parents. So like <coughs> people want to call me or call a building principal, you know, yes. we're happy yes. to have those sort of conversations. But something like this, we pride ourselves as a community coming together, and transparency helps us. 
seems to leave with that. Thank you. someone would have asked me if I wanted armed guards in school, I was a hard no. And through education and resource and, and, and discussions, obviously we're there now. So as far as this situation is concerned, it, it, it's a conversation uh, that has to go onto the table. And we have to have this conversation. And 
we have to look into it, and we have to continue to talk to our security experts, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and I just want to piggyback off of what you said, which I don't really disagree with anything that you said, but I do believe that, you know, I don't know if metal detectors are 100% proof, full proof, and it just goes again, uh, serves as a reminder that the school can't do this on its own, and we, we do need that help from moms and dads and guardians at home, and, and our parents have to continue to be aware of what is going on in their children's life, uh, and not just assume that everything is great. I think we all like to, but that's not reality. And it always seems to be, I don't know if that's fair to say, I'm not even gonna make that statement, but nonetheless, uh, I, I thank you for what you have to say with this. Uh, it will be discussed uh, almost immediately, and you know, uh, we cannot make any promises, but we'll do what we think is best, and we'll, we'll continue to do what we think is best for the children and the staff of West Islip Schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, I, I appreciate you and your, your passion and your dedication to it. So I, I know as a board, as an administration, everything that gets talked about here or gets emailed to us, we discuss. So nothing is off the table for discussion, and we take advice, as Mr. Tussie said, six or seven years ago, we talked about on guards, it was kind of a no. We have on guards now, so there's always room to discuss and see what's best for him. Nothing's off the table.